वंदे हम श्री गुरु श्री युत पद कमल श्री गुरु वैष्णव श्री रूप सागर जात सह गण रघुनाथ नितम तम सजीव साइत सवधूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पाद सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखा विता नम विष्णु पदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाछा कल्प तरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु भय च पति पावने वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो महाबदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामने गौर तुषे नम नीलाचल निवासाय निताय परमात्म बलभद्र सुभद्राभ्या जगन्नाथाय ते नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासादि गौर भक्त बृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 नाम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू बी हियर विद ऑल ऑफ यू एंड स्पेशली आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल टू ज्योति प्रभु फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी सो व्हेन आई आस्क द टॉपिक द प्रभु टोल्ड दैट एनीथिंग दैट कैन इंस्पायर अस इन कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस सो सो यस्टरडे ओनली वन पर्सन केम टू मी सो ही वाज फ्रॉम एफएसएसआई uh food safety standards uh, that that is an uh, uh it's a government organization which certify food standards so he came to me and we were talking he, he came to my office so he said that uh, he was telling about himself he told that uh, uh he came from a village background and uh, he was in noida for some time there he got some connection with his con devotees and uh, he was staying in hostel and regularly visiting temple for prasadam and uh, then he was telling that uh, i want to do something in education sector i want to do something in health sector and then he said although i am doing many things but still i am not satisfied so so then i asked him what is the goal of your life so he said that uh, uh, i want to in whichever field i go i want to just excel uh, i want to do something for the society and this and that and then i told him just see uh, the point is it seems that you are not really clear about your goal and uh, being an honest person he agreed yes that uh, i am really not sure about my goal and then it reminded me of my situation before coming to krishna consciousness so actually when we invite different speakers for giving class it's not that we requires we we want some knowledge from them because whatever knowledge is required in krishna consciousness within 6 months or 7 months or 8 months or one year of being connected with iskon we get all the knowledge we are not this body we are soul krishna is the supreme personality of god it etc so this information we we get just in short period of time but when it comes to get realization so it takes long time so the purpose of inviting different speakers to the forum like we also invite different speakers and uh, and give our students opportunity to interact with them it's not because they'll give something some more information or knowledge it because how they practice krishna consciousness what all challenges they face what all their realizations are so that realization is actually which is more important than just a theoretical uh, concept what is the shrimad bhagavatam it is said swa anubhavam akhil shuti saram ekam adhyatma deepam atitrishatam tamondham संसारिणाम करुण्य पुराण गुह्यम तम व्यास सुनुम गुरु मुनिना सुत गोस्वामी इज ग्लोरिफाइंग शील सुखदेव गोस्वामी एंड सेंग वॉट एक्जैक्टली दिस श्रीमद भागवतम इज स्व अनुभव अखिल श्रुति सारम एक ऑल द वेदिक लिटरेचर हैज बीन स्टडेड एंड एसिमुलेटेड बाय सुखदेव गोस्वामी एंड ही इज प्रेजेंटिंग दिस श्रीमद भागवतम आफ्टर एसिमुलेटिंग ऑल द वेदिक स्क्रिप्चर एंड वॉट इज दिस श्रीमद भागवतम it is the realization of shukde goswami so shukde goswami has read all the vedas and after reading all the vedas after studying all the vedas under the able guidance of vyasdev what he is presenting is 
now it is shrimad bhagavatam so somebody can easily read the vedas and will he get some uh, realization may or may not and mostly may not but when he approaches a bona fide spiritual master he approaches a realized person he approaches a tattvadarshi then this tattvadarshi has already assimilated the all the concepts of the vedas and now he is presenting it with his own realization and we come to different forum we we invite different speakers to 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 capture their realizations to absorb the realization so that is what is actually actually happening in shrimad bhagavatam shukde go so means knowledge is not the thing that we are going to take from him because many 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 things are there in shrimad bhagavatam which has been repeated in different puranas but shukde go so means realization is not repeated anywhere so that is for the very first time it is being uh, presented through shrimad bhagavatam similarly when we go to different uh, vaishnavas and we and we inquire from them it is said that uh, uh, same questions we inquire even if we know we should still inquire why we should inquire just like you will see shrimad bhagavatam 11th canto uh, narad muni used to travel around the dwarka city and some day he goes to someone's house another he goes to another's house so one day he approached vasudev's house and then vasudev and devki very warmly invited greeted narad muni and they they gave him asan to sit they washed his feet and then they started to inquire and what was the inquiry they asked the, so vasudev is saying that we are too much engrossed in our our uh, um, grihasthi household life and therefore we are not able to focus on the supreme personality of godhead so kindly give us some some uh, knowledge kindly give us some way by which we can absorb our mind in krishna now who is asking vasudev is asking and who is vasudev he is father of krishna but just see what is the humility of uh, vasudev and devki that when narad muni approached before them so they are asking being very humble becoming very submissive they are asking how to become more attached to krishna although they are the one who is who are the most attached krishna appeared in this material world by their tapasya but still so they are teaching an ideal example of a household and not just household anyone just see prithu maharaj prithu maharaj is incarnation of the supreme personality of godhead but when the four kumaras approached prithu maharaj kingdom prithu maharaj sat them on very elegant asan washed their feet and started to inquire about spiritual life so what prithu maharaj doesn't know he knows everything but then what is asking from four kumaras their realization about krishna consciousness so the point that i wanted to uh, make here is uh, the purpose of inviting different speakers to our forum is to uh, is to um, uh, understand or is to absorb their realizations so whatever i have realized in krishna consciousness whatever little uh, i have so i just i'll just be sharing So as I was telling that person who yesterday who came to me and I asked him what is actually your goal of life, so he said I am totally confused. He actually agreed for that point. So then it reminded me of my situation when I was not in Krishna consciousness and how much confused I was. So I just narrate that story because that story is going to give uh, some some like another thing I just wanted to share. What is the difference between Vedas and the Puranas? So Puranas are known as Purak. Vedas have the concepts. but puranas gave the case study and the case study help help us to understand the concept in a better way just like uh, when we we'll see in our ncert books so some theory has been mentioned say for example in nagaland or in kohima in northeast they used to do irrigation using bamboos so that is the concept but then they gave the case study such and such person installed uh, bamboo in such and such way and it is how it is uh, helping the villagers and then they give some photographs So the concept is there, and the practical case study is there, and that will make our understanding complete. Similarly, Vedas have all the concepts. Vedas have different philosophies, different darshans, but then Puranas they are presenting the case studies, and that those case studies are helping us to understand the whole concept in a better way. And those who do not accept the authority of Puranas, they don't, they they never get the conclusion of the Vedas. there are certain section of the society in india also you will find the different uh, propa they quoted them many times like there are different societies those who accept the vedas but they reject the puranas this is that we don't accept mahabharat we don't accept puranas 
we only accept vedas we only accept shruti we do not accept smriti and we do not accept itihas like mahabharata and ramayana so for them vedas is always a mystery always a mystery brahma ji says in brahma samhita vedeshu durlabha adurlabha atma bhakto for those who are studying doing rigorous study of vedas for them understanding lord is very difficult vedeshu durlabha it's very durlab but adurlabha atma bhakto for devotees it is adurlab for devotees the conclusion of vedas get manifest so the case studies are very important so whatever concept that we have in our krishna consciousness when we listen to some vaishnava we listen to some devotees and we we find out theory we knows we know that what all what all dynamics are there in krishna consciousness but when we listen to those devotees realizations the case studies that they how they have undergone krishna consciousness just like we have an example of surrender and who is the best example of surrender the draupadi is the best example of surrender why the draupadi is the best example because when krish when when dushasan was uh, disrobing her so at that time uh, draupadi was trying to catch her sari from one hand and another hand she was calling krishna and the moment she gave up everything and then krishna appeared so what does it shows so we now understand that until unless we do to the degree we have surrender to that degree krishna protects 50% surrender 50% protection 25% surrender 25% protection 100% surrender 100% protection we can learn from the example of uttara when ashutthama released brahmastra and uttara saw that brahmastra is coming and is going to destroy her womb and who was there in the womb parikshit maharaj was there in the womb and who is parikshit he is the last uh, last person of the kuru dynasty so now if parikshit will die then the kuru dynasty will collapse nothing will remain because already five uh, children of uh, um draupadi were already killed so uttara when she saw that that ashwatthama has released brahmastra so she approached krishna although uh, bhima was there yudhishthir was there arjuna was there but why uttara approached why uttara approached krishna why not to them because uttara knew that all these personalities were present when my um, mother in law draupadi was being disrobed in the in an assembly in the in the kuru assembly when she was being disrobed these all personalities were there but they could not do anything it was krishna who held and knowing that just see he, she could understand that uh, it is worthless to approach anyone else and therefore uttara at once approached krishna pahi pahi mahajogin deva deva jagat pate na anyat tad abhayam pashy yatra mrityu parasparam na anyat i don't find anyone else na anyat tad abhayam pashy who can give me fearlessness yatra mrityu parasparam this material world is is a world of death parasparam every moment there is there is fear of death and i cannot find anyone else other than you krishna deva deva jagat pati you are the de- you are the uh, you are the supreme you are the deva of the deva and i don't find anyone else who is worth approaching therefore i am coming to you so what what this what this incidents is teaching us shastra says that we should approach krishna but how to approach krishna so we get one case study of uh, uttara we get one case study of draupadi we get one case study of prahlad we get one case study of dhruva so these all are case studies which is presented in puranas for us to help to understand the concepts better and apply it in our life why people read biographies of rich people why i want to read biography of steve jobs or a biography of uh, um maybe elon musk i want to know that how they became very rich and what was their consciousness what was their thinking pattern during the time of crisis and how they acted so we want to understand their mood we want to understand their uh, um their way of dealing so that we can apply those formulas in our life and we can also become rich like them similarly shrimad bhagavatam gives the case study of various devotees so that we can apply these uh, principles of krishna consciousness in our life following their example so as i was telling like uh, before coming to krishna consciousness i was also confused not very much uh, i was very inquisitive uh, trying to find out what exactly the uh, what exactly spirituality is i read bible quran so we were having some um, like one one teacher was there i was going 
and learning english from him so he was he was a christian so he was teaching me some some concepts from bible and i was having one we were having one uncle my father's friend so he is a muslim and he was teaching some concepts of quran and we are from basically hailing from punjabi family so we have some links in uh, <clears throat> sikhism so understanding sikhism so too much confusion but anyway the inquisitiveness was always there and then i was a kind of nationalist that i want to do something for country i want to do something for our nation i want to sacrifice myself so these all things were there but nothing was in a proper shape and when my 10th examination finished and results came then i was very much confused what subject should i go for uh, should i take mathematics and become an engineer or should i go for biology and take medical path or should i go for commerce and try for some ca or something else or should i go for some arts and try for ups etc so i was always confused so much so that that uh, we approached myself and my parents we approached many teachers and um, professors to ask them what is best what can be done what should be done what is the best career path like this in fact i remember that we also approached one astrologer to just find out that uh, what is good for me so i asked that astrologer i still remember the question uh, can i become neta i want to become a politician neta so can i do that in like is it in my kundali so she said she was very learned uh, she so she said no no it's not in your kundali you cannot become neta i said it's fine okay so then my 10th results came and uh, i i went to a cyber cafe to take my results so when i went to cyber cafe to take my results so at that that same day 12th results were also declared when 12th results were declared so i saw that one boy was there and he was seeing his result and there were subjects math the mathematics was there english was there and uh, like um, these all subjects were there chemistry physics and one extra subject was there that is biotechnology and i was never knowing about biotech biotech subjects so at once at once i became attracted no this is what uh, this is best i cannot go for biology complete biology because it may be little hectic with mathematics and biology two vast subjects so it will be very difficult but biotech seems interesting you'll be playing with dna we'll, we were having the concepts conception that we'll be doing cloning and we'll be creating like this shaktiman we saw cloning will make another person something like that we were having got all those conceptions so biotech uh, uh, seemed to me like attractive option so then i just find out where this biotech is available so in one of the schools uh, it was there so then i quit from the previous school and then i took admission in another school and just took this biotech biotech branch biotech stream and my 11th 12th but finished i prepared for je so but couldn't succeed as usual because as not very much focused so anyway so at that time i was having the concept okay let's go for some uh, go for higher studies in biotech so i took admission in one university at shimla it was jp university it was in shimla so we took admission there and for btech mtech integrated course and then my results came for madhya pradesh pre engineering test pt so when the results came and i was having very good rank so when i was having a very good rank so i thought that when why should we go for private college let's go for uh, some government college and uh, which branches what all branches are available in uh, madhya pradesh government colleges so then i then i um, found out then i saw that chemical engineering is available so it was one in one college is in ujjain it's government engineering college and another another college was in uh, gwalior so i thought that chemical maybe it is little bit link linking with biotech i should go for this so then i went to see uh, gwalior and the environment of gwalior like the climate was not very good it was very humid very much pollution the college was within the city in the very first side it discouraged me and then i went to see um, ujjain college government engineering college in ujjain so now when i went to see there so it was a very first side it is it, it, you can say like love at very first sight so the college was very nice situated in uh, so many trees were there very nice environment and uh, night it, it must have rained so the morning was very beautiful and everything was very peaceful so i thought of oh, this is this is the best place where i can uh, i can study and then if i want to go for biotech then i can go for higher studies so that was agenda in my mind 
So then we took admission in that college. I took admission in that college, and it was in a very first year of my college. So some uncle told me before I was in Bhopal, and this college was in Ujjain. It is 200 kilometers. So one uncle told me that uh, um, he said that uh, there is one big temple in Ujjain. You should go. You should some time go to that. I thought it's Mahakal. So apart from Mahakal, some big temple was there. So I said, okay, I'll find out. So it was very first day of my college. In the evening, I came back and I asked my landlady, that is, there is some big temple close to this place, apart from Mahakal. She, she said, yes, there is one Iskon temple. I said, fine, wow. So the very first day of my college, and I visited Iskon temple. And the moment I visited Iskon temple, you can well imagine, the big, beautiful temple. And our Sandhya Arati was going on, very elegant temple. And uh, Sandhya Arati was going on. And then when we were circumambulating the temple, so that one somewhere it was written, uh, Gita study course. I said, oh, what is this Gita study course? So I just approached the person sitting there and I asked him, what is the course fee? He said that 200 rupees, you'll get one Bhagavad Gita and you can register for course. At very moment, at that same moment, I, I was having 100 rupees. I took 100 rupees from a friend and I got registered for that Gita study course. And then the devotee who was sitting there, he, he told me, uh, he asked me, do we have five minute time? I said, yes, fine. So he asked me to sit down and we started some discussion. And I can well imagine these five minutes are still going on. Right? It's, it's not yet over. It's still going on. So the moment I started sitting with the devotee and so many questions were in my mind about, about spirituality, about uh, Vedas, about demigods, about God. So many things, whether God is person or imperson, etc. Et so many things were there. And every day, at least for three, four, five hours, I used to sit with a devotee. Said, Thanks to that devotee, uh, his grace, Basu Seshtra Prabhu. So every day I used to go to temple evenings because government college, not much studies and chemical branch, again, not much studies. So I utilized that time. I said that every day I should go. Every day I was going, asking different questions and the devotee was answering my questions. Three, four, five hours we used to sit. Like from evening four to night 10, we used to sit and I, he, I asked him many questions and he used to answer me. And this is how I came in Krishna consciousness. So, and gradually, gradually I become more and more involved in Krishna consciousness. But then later what I found, if I reflect my, my uh, like past, I said, now I, there was a time I wanted to become a scientist. So my grandfather actually, uh, when I passed my eighth standard. So um, at that time I was having a conception that I should become a doctor. So my grandfather gifted me a stethoscope. So, because I'll, if I'll see this stethoscope, I'll get some inspiration. Then in ninth standard, I was having a conception of oh, let me go for, I should become a scientist. So my grandfather gifted me a microscope. And then in 10th standard, uh, I thought that, okay, if I'll go for biology, I'll, I'll become a surgeon in future. I'll, I'll, I'll just say dissection in biology, it is useful. So I was crazy. Like I purchased that um, dissection set also. My grandfather sometimes used to told, tell me, that when you were in 8th standard, I gave you stethoscope. When you were in ninth standard, I gave you microscope. When you were in 10th standard, I gave you a, a dissection set. And what you have done? So I told him in 5th standard, you gave me Kartal. Now I'm playing those Kartal. <laughs> so the point is, <laughs> but I, when, when I reflect, whatever I wanted to be, coming in Krishna consciousness, I could achieve everything. I wanted to be a scientist. Now I'm a spiritual scientist. I wanted to be a teacher. So I said, okay, if nothing, I'll go for teaching. I like teaching. Still at my home, there is a big, big whiteboard we used to study. So that whiteboard I used to still there. So I, at, every time it reminds me, I wanted to be a teacher. Now I'm teaching every day. Now I wanted to be a Neta because I was kind of a nationalist. Like 15th August since 26th January we used to celebrate so elegantly. Like it was in 15th August, we celebrated with complete our celebration in the evening. We unfold the flag and then we went to Ujjain. And on 16th of August, my college started. So I was kind of uh, so much nationalist. But now I can understand that I am able to commit to my nation more than ever and give some, um, like, this is true nationalist. Now I'm, a, now I'm a true nationalist. So being a scientist, being a doctor, now I'm a spiritual doctor. I'm curing people's mind. Okay, I cannot cure my bodies, but I can cure minds of people. I wanted to be a neta. I'm leading. So whatever it was there in my, somewhere in my heart, what all desires were there, simply by coming to Krishna consciousness, now I'm reflecting everything got fulfilled. Everything got fulfilled. 
So this is Krishna consciousness. Somebody will ask me, what is Krishna consciousness? Krishna consciousness means you don't know what your desires are. There are many desires that are hidden in your heart. But the moment you come to Krishna consciousness, slowly, slowly you'll find out that whatever desires in, in any of the lifetime you are having, everything will get fulfilled. And not only that, you'll get even more something better than that. So this is what Krishna consciousness is. So there is no loss. When we say there is no loss and diminution in this process, and uh, even little dharma will give us the greatest benef- benediction. What exactly it is? It is like little Krishna consciousness. We'll find out that whatever desires were there in our heart, whatever uh, whatever we wanted to be. Now, if if I would I would have become a scientist, but not a doctor. I would have become a doctor, but not a teacher. I would have become a do- teacher, but not a nationalist. But now being in Krishna consciousness, simultaneously we can perform all the tasks. And not only this, or doing all these things may give some stress. Like we find teachers. And the other day, one teacher came to me. He was he's teaching in one coaching institute. And he is more than around 45 years old. And he told you, Prabhu, that in our coaching, the culture is the teacher should come in jeans and t-shirt. Why? Because students should feel the teachers are dynamic. Nobody wants to learn from an old teacher. They say old teachers are uh, are not, they don't like old teachers. So they have, even if like uh, they have to shave regularly and they have to wear jeans and t-shirts just to present them well before students. And uh, even if they have a back pain, but just to, just to impress the students, they have to take classes three hours, four hours. So that students should feel that our teacher is very passionate, our teacher is very professional. So this is how coachings are creating pressure on, on teachers. Otherwise, they'll 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 not give promotion. They'll not give sufficient salaries. So what we are learning? So if I would have become a teacher like that, I would be in stress. But being in Krishna consciousness is always pleasurable. We have just heard about like like this one scientist of ISRO, who was uh, who was working on cryogenic engines, and then somehow he was uh, he was uh, um, there was a con- there was a conspiracy. And uh, he was um, proved to be a Desh Drohi. And after say 20, 30 years, he got uh, he got uh, released. But and and um, and it was proved that he was not of that kind. So being a scientist, how much uh, how much uh, stress it would have given to him. But being a spiritual scientist, no stress, relishing life. So Krishna consciousness means. Ananda Ambudhi Vardhanam. And it's not a theory. We need to realize it. Ananda Ambudhi Vardhanam. The ocean of pleasure should increase at every moment. If we are not experiencing something, something we are, we are not in Krishna consciousness. We are in Maya consciousness. I was reading one, one, one book in, in that Bhakti Maharaj writes. If we are feeling that there is some, uh, some uh, incompleteness, if, there, if we are feeling that uh, something is missing, something is lacking, Say for a project we want manpower, for a project we want money, for a project we want uh, uh, some support, and we are feeling that it's not coming. So Maharaj, it means that you are not in Krishna consciousness; you are in Maya consciousness. Because if you are Krishna conscious, if you are connected with Krishna, and what Krishna cannot provide, what Krishna cannot give. So this theory, Ananya Chintayanto Mam Ye Jana Pariyu Pasti Tesham Ne Tabiyuktanam Yoga Kshem Bahami Aham. Those devotees, those who are constantly engaged in my service, ananya chintayanto maam, ananya chintayanto. They're constantly absorbing their mind in me. What they have, I preserve. What they don't have, what they lack, I give. So it should not just remain a theoretical shloka from Bhagavad Gita. Each and every devotee should come to the point of practical realization, yet this is true. Krishna consciousness is mystical. Krishna consciousness is magical. Coming to Krishna consciousness, my life has really transformed. Otherwise, after practicing many years, and when people do not find uh, sufficient change in themselves, they become discouraged and they, they go away. Because they could not relate that whatever scripture is saying that Krishna is the source of everything and if I'll approach Krishna, he'll, he'll, he'll make arrangements for me. If this theory has doesn't become a practical for us, then anytime we can leave. So faith has to be on that platform, Shraddha Shabdesh Vishwas Kai Sudara Nishche, Krishna Bhakti Kaila Sarva Karma Krit Hai. I mean, to Krishna consciousness, having faith means that if I'll do, if I'll, if I'll be in Krishna consciousness, if I'll become a devotee of Krishna, 
then everything else is done that should not no longer remain a theory it should be we should practically we should put ourselves in such situation so that practically we can experience it i'll just give one two examples like you see the life of pandavas now pandavas if sometimes people say our philosophy is like even if you come to krishna consciousness there will, there will be material miseries because we are not coming to krishna consciousness to avoid material miseries and the pr most practical example is the part <laughs> the pandavas they are in krishna they are the pure devotees of krishna they are too close to krishna but just see their life so much difficulty they have undergone but we will not find anywhere that they have they have started complaining oh krishna why are you are giving so much pain to us so so much difficulty because the more difficulty they experience the more close they come to krishna like pandavas it was when 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 bhishma pitama was was on his death bed the bed of arrows at that time the pandavas and along with krishna they all approached vyasa dhoma and so many rishis they all followed them and they all approached near bhishma pitama and they all approached in very elegant dresses in very um like princely kingly ways royal ro in, in royal dresses somebody may ask the question bhishma pitama is about to die and the pandavas are decorating them in the royal way with with crown and with kavacha and they're coming to bhishma krishna told them to do like this why because it was bhishma pitama's desire to see pandavas in that way and krishna was knowing the desire krishna was knowing the desire of bhishma and all these pandavas in the elegant dress in in uh, in very royal way they with coming on their rathas made of gold they approach bhishma and then bhishma said told that uh, you pandavas are the sons of or are the incarnations of dharma but then why you have to undergo such pain because if you we'll say that devotees suffer due to their karma that is not the right way that it's not the right fact devotees sometimes think that i am suffering because of my karma he feels like this but the fact is devotee doesn't suffer his karma tatya anukampa su samikshamano bhunjan evatma krita vipakam a devotee feels that whatever difficulties i am facing in my life is because of my vipakam whatever bad things i have done as a result i am getting the reaction but actually this is not the fact for devotees uh this concept doesn't work devotees are out of karma devotees do not face karmic difficulties so if how can pandavas suffer so much if there is no karmic reactions and bhishma told that you are not suffering because of your karma because you are your incarnation of dharma how can you perform a bad karma and get a bad result then the question comes then why you are suffering at the end and then bhishma said one thing you know what it's all krishna's desire he pointed out his finger towards krishna and said it is his desire and the question comes then why it is his desire that his devotee should suffer and the answer is prema bhakti vivardhanartham the only reason krishna puts his difficult puts his devotee into difficult difficult uh, situations just for one reason prema bhakti vivardhanartham just to increase their prema bhakti just to increase their loving devotion the only reason devotee suffer is this and therefore you find that when when some suffering comes to devotee their 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 uh, their uh, love for krishna increases many folds when some difficulties come to a devotee life what is the difference between her, her consciousness of devotee and atheist propa used to give this story that there were germans who sent their children in world war and then uh, and the mothers were praying in church that my children have gone for fighting and they should come back but unfortunately many of them died so those whose children died so they become atheist or oh, there is no god why there is no god because we went to church and we prayed to krishna we prayed to god that my our children should come back but they died in the battle they died in the war that means there is no god robert used to comment okay you when they went to church, when they went to war you are going in church and asking god that they should come safe but before sending have you consulted god <laughs> you sent them have you consulted god while sending them so atheist means their faith is so fickle that any problems comes to their life 
So, so they say there is no God. They become atheists. But devotee means the bigger problem they, they face, the more dependent they become upon Krishna. The bigger problem they see, the more uh, surrendered they become to Krishna. And thousands and thousands of examples in Bhagavatam, all like you see Prahlad Mara, you see Brajavasis, any problem coming, they become more surrendered to Krishna. And Kunti is asking for problems because the more problems will come, it is an opportunity for us to become more Krishna conscious. So this is the consciousness of devotee. It, actually, devotees are not asking for problems. But devotees are asking because when there are material problems, it is an opportunity for devotees to become more and more absorbed in Krishna. That is the consciousness of a devotee. And non-devotees, they want to eradicate problems. They want because they are after comfortable lifestyle. It is said in we, we sing this song, Sukh Sampati Gharaya Kashmite Tanka. Om Jay Jagdish Hare. That uh, prosperity and uh, happiness should come to our house, Sukh Sampati Gharaya Kashmite Tanka. And whatever problems are there in body should go away. And therefore, we are approaching Om Jay Jagdish Hare. We are approaching Lord Jagdish, Lord Krishna. But that is not our philosophy. Our philosophy is Manas Deho Geho Jo Kichumor Arpilutua Pade Nanda Kishor. Some Pade Vipade. Either it is Sampad or it is Vipad. It is prosperity, times of prosperity or times of uh, difficulties. My only desire is to absorb my consciousness in your lotus feet. That is the beauty of Krishna consciousness. There is a beautiful verse in Srimad Bhagavatam Prabhupada many times quoted. Ji Anne Arvind Laksh Vimukta Manina. Swai Asad Bhavad Abhishuddha Buddha Aroha Krichena Param Padam Tata Patanti Ada Anadya Kishwatanga. It's coming in 10th canto. Prayers offered by the demigods. Garbastuti. When Krishna was in the womb of his mother, at that time, uh, at that time, demigods are praying, offering these prayers. So this prayer says that those who are not devoted to the lotus feet of Krishna, so even by their so-called endeavors, they may approach, they may reach the parampada. They may reach up to the point of liberation, but from there they fell down. Why? Because Anadriya, Vishma Tangriya. Because they have disobeyed, because they have they are not in connection with the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. On the contrary, the next verse says, Tathanate Madhav Tavaka Kochit. Bharshanti Marga Toy Badhusohirda. It is said, next talk says, but this is not the case with devotees. It is sometimes seen that devotees fell down. But then like Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur is explaining in this shloka. He says that we see when Vishwamitra fell down, so all the scriptures are talking about Vishwamitra. Vishwamitra fell down, Vishwamitra fell down from his position. Shaubari Muni fell down from his position. So many examples are there. But we have also seen that devotees fell down. We have seen the Bharat Maharaj fell down. He was practicing Krishna consciousness on the Bhava platform. And then he fell down from his position and he became dear. Why not scriptures discuss this topic? Why only scriptures give examples of fell down of Vishwamitra and uh, Shabari, etc. But why not of uh, why not of uh, uh, Bharata? When it comes to Bharata, scripture doesn't say much. Vishwanath Chakravarti is raising this question. And the answer that Vishwanath Chakravarti gives is very beautiful. He says that if devotees sometimes fell down, it is by the by the uh, by the plans of Krishna, by the desire of Krishna. So that devotees can come back to Krishna consciousness and their loving affection towards Krishna multiplying like hundredfold. And that is what happened with the Bharata. When Bharata became dear, in dear body, he was totally conscious. He was not associating with other deers. He was eating, not eating green grass. He was satisfied, content with the dry grass because he doesn't want to remain attached. And in next body in Jada Bharat, although he was very intelligent, he was acting like Jada. He doesn't want to get attached in any situation. His father was teaching Vedic mantras, but he was not at all interested. His father, whatever father was teaching, he was doing I'll just opposite because he does not want to get entangled. And he was so much so conscious that it is said that his devotion when he was in Bharata's body got multiplied 100 times. Sometimes a devotee fell down from their position it is because Krishna wanted to bring them back in Krishna consciousness with their devotion increases hundredfold. And this is the beauty of Krishna consciousness. Therefore, it is said that he, having once begun, uh, Krishna forcibly drags someone to one, one towards perfection. If somebody has just started Krishna consciousness, forcibly Krishna drags him. This is the beauty of Krishna consciousness. That uh, whatever difficulties come, whatever miseries come, whatever uh, negativities come, but devotee 
in all those situations become more and more devoted towards Krishna. And that is how Krishna acts. One thing I would like to add and I would end the, my presentation. Uh, in Ma, in Madhure Kadambani, uh, it's a very beautiful book written by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. And it explains the whole, whole process, whole dynamics of our Krishna question. How Krishna question starts from Shraddha to the level of Prema. It is said that when when seed of Krishna consciousness is um, is um, is uh, put in the soil of heart, and then the first two leaves come out, Shubda and Kleshagni, life becomes auspicious, and whatever miseries that we are feeling, we become we feel relaxed. Uh, it is said that uh, in Bhagavatam first canto, Parikshit Maharaj is saying, Dhautatma Purusha Krishna Padamula Namuchati. Mukta Sarva Pariklesha Part Swasharnam Yatha. How a devotee feels when he comes to Krishna. Huh? He said that devotee never gives away lotus feet of Krishna. Padamulam Nam Uchati. Mukta Sarva Pariklesha. When he comes to Krishna, he, he feels that he is free, now free from all Klesha. Part Swasharnam Yatha. If there is, a, there is a person who is on travel and after a long time he returns back to his home, how he feels? This is how devotee feels when he comes back to Krishna. And this, this kind of, when he comes back to Krishna, he feels like this. And therefore, he never wants to go away from the lotus feet of Krishna. But sometimes it happens that uh, due, to, uh, due to the uh, attractive potency of uh, material energy, um, person becomes attracted towards it. And sometimes he may give up a Krishna consciousness, apparently. But then he always remembers, that is also Bhagavatam says, he always remembers the lotus taste. He, because he has already tasted the honey of the lotus feet of Krishna, he always remembers, remember, remember, and someday he come back. Madhur Kandamani explains that whenever a person, when he starts Krishna consciousness, he he feels relaxed, he feels klesha agni, like he's free from all kleshas, and uh, shubda, life becomes auspicious, and shraddha. Then, according to his faith, he associates with sadhu, sadhu sangha, and then sadhu engages, the, engages them in bhajan kriya. Bhajan Kriya means, when the Sadhu tells them, okay, you chant these many rounds, you read these many books, you get up early in the morning, you do Mangala Arati, and they give Sadhana. And gradually, gradually, when, when they engage themselves in Sadhana, then comes the most difficult phase of a spiritual life called Anartha Nibriti. And our heart starts to get cleansed. It is the longest, it is the longest uh, go, uh, going uh, um, phase of Krishna consciousness and most difficult. So just imagine if somebody have uh, put some uh, Chewingum on our hair, in, at, on our hairs. And we need to remove that chewingum. How much painful it will be. Similarly, in our consciousness, too much dirt has just, it has accumulated, not just accumulated, it's just, uh, 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 just absorbed. The right word is absorbed. And to clean that, clean our consciousness, it's very difficult. We we'll feel a little pain. Therefore, anarth nivritti is the longest phase and it's very painful. But one has to go on utsaha, nishya, dhairya, dhairya, patience, 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 one year, two year, four year, five year, ten year, one lifetime, two lifetime. He has to go on, go on, go on. And when this anarth nivritti goes away, then come to the point of nishtha. Then our, our bhakti become on the bhaktir bhauti nishti. So this is how the, it, it works. So for devotees, we need to always remain encouraged because the moment will come in anarth nivritti says things become literally difficult um, we because it is always painful because krishna is cleansing our attachments cleansing krishna is cleansing our consciousness and all many times it happened that we become like there are misunderstandings there are difficulties uh, physical difficulties emotional difficulties so many things we have to face in this phase of anarth nivritti and we have to patiently tolerate it because once we'll tolerate it once this phase is over, then we'll come to the stage of Nishtha. And then Krishna consciousness will come, then we'll have uh, Ruchi, Asakti, etc. So this is the most difficult phase. And devotees need to, uh, devotees need to be uh, aware about this phase. The new devotees, when they come, and people are, people are coming to Krishna, but they do, not, they do not carry on for long. Because the moment this Anarthi stage starts, they go away. Because they, start, they thought that we came to Krishna consciousness to become happy. But the moment we came to Krishna consciousness, now things are becoming literally difficult. There is so much politics. There is so much uh, things going on in temple and congregation and uh, they give up. But they have to understand the fact that this is 
the point when purification process has really started, unearth nivritti phase has started. And if I'll somehow continue on this path, on this, in this phase, if I'll continue, then once it is done, then I'm pure. I'll, I'll become Shuddha. And then I'll be able to relish Krishna consciousness. So because devotees are not aware of this, uh, this particular phase, they become discouraged and go away. So it is our, our utmost responsibility to um, uh, inform all our congregation that uh, the, the moment this phase will start, you'll not find Krishna consciousness very interesting, very blissful, but still <laughs> you need to tolerate it. Because at, this is the moment when uh, actual purification is going on. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Thank you so much, Prabhu, for the wonderful class. Actually, I forgot to introduce everyone. <laughs> so we can start now. Actually, um, yeah, we can start with one new devotee. She has recently joined uh, and she comes to our temple and I gave her um, chanting beads and she has a lot of questions. So. Hare Krishna Shishti Mataji. Can you just oh. unmute yourself? Hello, Hare Krishna. <laughs> He's from Bangladesh. She does, she's a doctor here, eye doctor, separated here. And yeah, Prabhu, uh, Mataji, can you just switch on your video so that you can... Sorry, I just got home. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. That's, that's okay. You can ask what questions. happened. That's uh, I think, is well, it okay if I question. just listen to other people first a little bit? It's just oh, something okay. happened. Sorry. Okay, okay, okay. That's all right. That's all right. No worries. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, next we have um, Raghavendra Prabhu. Hare Hare Krishna, Krishna. Raghavendra Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Prabhu is also from Madhya Pradesh. Oh, so, which place? Prabhu I don't know, asking. you're from which place? Sorry, Prabhuji. You're from which place? I'm from Sagar. Oh, Sagar. Wow. So agricultural language. Prabhu has done a PhD in agriculture here in Australia. And he's now a scientist. So he's taking care of our Tulsi Maharani. Wow. So, <laughs> in I'm the first really... year of Raghav and the Prabhu, our Tulsi Maharani is surviving in minus six degree also. <laughs> So now it's winter in Australia. Sending all the spiritual things from you know everyone, Jyoti Prabhu and, and as well the world. So yeah. yeah. So Prabhu is now chanting sixteen rounds also for I think for a month now. So yeah. That's... So next we'll go to Jignesh Prabhu. So Jignesh Prabhu, Hari Bol Prabhu. Can we have your video on, Prabhu? Sorry, Prabhu, I'm like a desktop. Okay, okay, okay. Koi nahi, koi nahi. Prabhu is also from India, from Gujarat, and practicing Krishna consciousness since long. And yes, Prabhu. So, and Prabhu, like, he's been in Australia for more than 10, 15 years, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu, like, uh, more than 10 years. Ago. Yeah, Prabhu was in Melbourne actually before and now he moved to Canberra since two, three years. Yeah. And then we have um, Vikesh Prabhu. Whoever is there, like, please turn on your video. Then I can. Yeah, Kiran Mark. <laughs> Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. So, yeah, Kiran Mataji also, she. She actually, um, like she came to Australia after six months after I came. So, and we were all staying together at the beginning. Then this is how she came into Krishna consciousness. And then she is now chanting 16 rounds and she has taken shelter recently in India. Like on the time I came to India and during February, she also came and she visited Mayapur, Puri. And she's from Mumbai. And this is how she also got into Krishna consciousness. And her uh, husband also is trying. And yeah, they are actually shifting their house today. So they are a bit busy with that. Yeah. So, Deepali Mataji, hai kya udar? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Ganda Vatana. Thank you so much for giving me such a great class.
highly appreciated prabhu ji thank you uh, i just want to ask one question ek ko ho raha hai ek ko ho raha hai dono ka ek ka bol ek kaam karu main isko se lag jati theek hai ha yeah prabhu ji so i just want to ask one question that um, um regarding the astrology you were saying so now i seen that many devotees they are still following this astrology things in fact they are the astrologer been a devotee into the krishna consciousness so is that a correct method prabhu ji uh, so we should still believe in that thing or we should not <coughs> like i was referring to krishna astrology when i was not in krishna consciousness uh, but uh, what we have heard from like we are in bhuvneshwar we heard from gaur govind maharaj so we should not get we should not be dependent upon astrology because it is also science it is true but then we have taken shelter of krishna then why do we need to think much about the 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 planets because our go- ultimate goal is to become 100% surrendered to krishna then <clears throat> then where is the scope of um, taking shelter of planets and astrology but that is a science it is it is uh, uh, it is said that uh, uh, like uh, if there is some extreme case kind of then in certain situation devotees are being instructed to refer to astrology but in general it should not be the trend like uh, uh, i was hearing from his holiness haldar swami maharaj the one who was telling that uh, yeah it's true in devotee community that astrology is uh, being referred but it is only for a specific cases we should not make it a general trend specific cases in somebody is is undergoing a lot of trauma because of his previous sanskars and not able to practice krishna consciousness quite stably so then at that time they are being recommended to follow or take advice from astrology because anyway they are not uh, in a mood to surrender completely so in that sense just to help them to retain or just to live in krishna to be in krishna consciousness at least remain connected so devotee astrologers help them and gradually gradually they tell astrology as well as well as they give those of krishna consciousness because they don't have much faith in krishna consciousness they have much faith in astrology so this is how the devotee astrologers kind of uh like when like when we are preaching students the students come to us asking their career problems or relationship problems so they are not interested in krishna consciousness but we preach them we give them career tips we give them uh, relationship advice and then gradually gradually give them krishna consciousness with that so similarly those who don't have much faith in krishna consciousness but they are much into astrology or they are facing difficulties in their life because of previous karma So in that case, they are not able to surrender to Krishna immediately. For them, astrology is being advised. But let us not make it a general trend, because our uh, Propad has already Propad has rejected in many many places in many conversations said that we are not after astrology. Uh, our, we have taken shelter of Krishna, and we should stick to that. But for specific cases, general it it is being recommended, but not for general. the general trend is we should avoid <clears throat> being into astrology i hope i could uh, make that clear yeah prabhu ji very nice uh, explanation you have given very convincing weather so thank you so much prabhu ji hare krishna hare krishna prabhu hare krishna um i had another question regarding uh, the example you gave of uh, for dropati mata ji um like when when she was trying to hold her sari um like krishna was not helping her but when she fully surrendered to krishna so um then krishna appeared and he helped uh, dropati mata ji but in kalyuga prabhu it's it's been said everybody says like you have to um you know try from your side first once you're trying hard from your side then um lord and krishna will help you but if you're not trying by yourself um krishna won't help you so isn't that contradictory prabhu no Just... it's not contradictory <clears throat> the the right way of doing it is like we have seen we can see that from the life of shila propas and other acharyas like once uh, one someone when propas was new in america and 
one of his student who was a who was a drug addict he tried to kill propas he became so violent and what propa did propa ran away from that place so now propa could have said okay i'll stay here i'll i'll stay here and let krishna protect me but what propa is teaching us from his practical examples so the the the, the right approach is when we are praying we should have 100% feeling that krishna is going to protect me krishna is going to do for me but when we are acting on the field then then we should act 100% okay on our this i have to do if i will not do i will not get success for example two three example you can see like arjuna krishna is teaching him whole concept of surrender but surrender also is krishna is also telling you fight so one on one hand you saying you are you become surrendered and on the other hand is saying you fight is it not contradictory no it's not contradictory you fight being surrendered to me mam anusmana judas so you have to act you cannot become inert the proper was telling in one of his lectures that devotees run say uh, krishna that uh, you fight for me and i'll i'll eat bhang <laughs> proper was telling in one lecture <laughs> no devotee's attitude is when they are praying they are completely devoted when but when they are acting on krishna's behalf it is 100% their responsibility to act another example is uh, yashoda yashoda is acting such a way that if i not feed krishna krishna will die so krishna is not going to die but what drop, what what yashoda is feeling if i not feed krishna he'll die so this is how devotees consciousness is completely surrendered to krishna but action wise we are not inert we are active yes prabhu thank you so much prabhu hari krishna hari krishna yes kiran udar bikesh ye sab hai kya ha ek second bikesh prabhu <coughs> हरे कृष्णा प्रभु हरे कृष्णा क्या करना इंट्रोड्यूस कर रहे हैं ज्योति प्रभु हरे कृष्णा प्रभु तो एक्चुअली विक्टेश प्रभु इज आल्सो स्टडीइंग हिज पीएचडी इन एनयू इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया इन कैनबरा सो ही इज आल्सो लाइक बीन इन कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस फॉर ऑलमोस्ट 2 इयर्स नाउ Yes, <laughs> more than that, and then he's a um, very serious devotee, chanting sixteen rounds. He also took shelter, um, maybe a year ago, and yeah, initiation is still pending. Actually, uh, during the Thyatra, we were told, but we could not go of certain circumstances. And then he is regularly doing service in temple, and yeah, that is all about Vikesh Prabhu and Bhavesh Prabhu is there. Mm-hmm. Hare Krishna Prabhu Sarva Pranam Prabhu thank you for the nice class and giving us the concept of what real krishna consciousness i am really happy with the last question because we always think the same that okay if we are in krishna consciousness then the krishna will take care of all of things so your clarity on that one when we acting on behalf of krishna then we actually have to take responsibility but i think your realization i think that that's not easy it's easier said than done so senior devotees like you continue to um, give us a vision and clarify the concepts because it's a long journey and we definitely need your guidance hey krishna prabhu thank you for the nice class hari krishna prabhu he is he is my husband hari <laughs> krishna and this is the dipali mata ji's husband hari krishna prabhu hari krishna very nice lecture prabhu that's it jyoti we are only these many people here <laughs> okay okay and here is digit also prabhu hari krishna, krishna prabhu dhanyavad pranam dhanyavad pranam um i do have a question but uh, you have answered like most of my uh, doubts 
uh, like before I'm going to my question, I just want to say like uh, some glorification on you. Um, so I was, I, I was in Iskon Bhuneshwar like uh, when Krishna Kati Prabhu was giving classes uh, one day, like um, Prabhu said that he's going to do his, uh, in, he's going to enhance his studies uh, by going to Mayapur. So on that day, like you came and you gave us classes. Like we were, uh, we were full doubtful. Like we, the students, the Bhunishwar students were like completely doubtful, like how the classes are going to be because Krishna Gati Prabhu gives classes like in a bullet, like in a very bullet way. Like he just gives the gunshots to all the students. So the classes will be like in a very high level. So when, when you came, that was the first time we all met you and you gave the classes to us. I can still remember like you were like talking about like how the British has occupied India and they introduced the tool called education and, uh, and how they transferred us. I can realize now that that's why I'm in Australia. It's because of the education, like missing so many valuable things in India. And uh, I don't know what I'm doing here, but still I'm missing so many valuable things in India. Um, and then we, and then the classes which you gave, that gave us more interest. But, and then Indumati Mataji came and then she took over all the Vaishnavis <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> And uh, when they did the Bhakti Vriksha, they said the Kalpana zone is going to be taken care by Tukaram Prabhuji. I was like thinking this is the opportunity like I should not miss ever. So I just complete my office and I just run to Bhakti Vriksha classes. I think you remember me still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just don't want to miss your classes at any chance. Even I was like very... Um, like uh, very keenly listening to your class today. Uh, so my, why I said all these things is that the association and um, the encouragement, the spirit in Iskon Bhuneshwar, which I got is like um, uncomparable. Like I can never get like that kind of association in any temple. <laughs> So my question is that now I'm in Iskon Canberra. Um, so I'm not having uh, that interest to go to the temple often. Um, it might be because of many reasons. As you said in the last thing, you should have the, you should tolerate patiently to uh, cross this uh, segment so that we can pass this test. So how to bring uh, uh, interest to go to uh, Iskon Canberra because my interest to go to Iskon Canberra is like is like uh, uh, like not comparable as Iskon Bhuneshwar because I just run to Iskon Bhuneshwar like whenever I get time, whenever I am free or whenever there is seva and whenever Mataji gives class, I definitely run for sure. <laughs> Still, I'm like uh, listening to her classes on Saturday and Sunday just to see her face at least and just to listen some of her words which will uh, keep me in that um, in Krishna consciousness state all the way so that I will not miss anything. Um, so my question is that, like, how to bring uh, interest uh, to go to temple uh, where I'm not um, getting uh, that kind of, uh, um, of feeling, uh, like how I go to Iskon Bhuneshwar? <laughs> Wonderful question. <clears throat> An answer is very simple. Uh, I'll not say take association or this and that because theory is theory and practical is practical. I'll just give one practical thing. Like uh, uh, you must have um, you must have realized that uh, we all have realized that when we were kids, so we were not too much into our household affairs. Like we were not interested. Our mother used to do things. Father used to earn for us. And they used to maintain the house. They used to manage everything. And we were very carefree. But then when you got married, 
and then you are running your own house it's it's uh, like running a house is even more difficult than running a company <laughs> yeah it's similar like running a company so when it's your own house ek mahal ho sapno ka ek ghar ho sapno ka so now you are careful about each and every detail everything is done nicely bills are paid cleanliness cooking everything you are taking care but when you are under your parents protection then parents are doing everything you are carefree so similarly in krishna consciousness or similarly in the case is if you will remain a visitor in canberra temple you will always remain a visitor the 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 management will do things and uh, they will take care of everything and you will not feel much connected and the solution if you remain want to remain connected you take the responsibility instead of um, like it's it's your temple now you have to take lead you have to develop it if that consciousness will come just like your home and parents home so parents home although it's our home but we are not very much inclined to doing things but when it is our home we do everything so uh, so lovingly so carefully so to the extent you will remain a remain a visitor in canberra temple this problem will never get solved if some good speaker will come then you will come to listen him if not then you will remain outsider not very much involved and that will not help you to develop in krishna consciousness but the moment you will involve get yourself involved in managing canberra temple the moment you the moment you'll get involved in festivals the moment you'll start taking responsibility not small responsibility big big responsibility then everything you'll be thinking about canberra temple you, then you are not just a visitor there you are the one who is managing there so then then there is no question of interest ultimately you have to do it our home should not be our home temple should be our first home that is what propa actually wanted So we are also seeing here. You must have observed in Bhuvneshwar also. Those who are coming as visitors Sunday to Sunday, they remain visitors for years together. But those who came and took responsibilities, they grow. They grew in, in Krishna consciousness. Uh, uh, it's it's with me actually. Like when I was in Ujjain, so I my I started my Krishna consciousness in Ujjain, and for five years, like four years, when I was doing my college, I was there in Ujjain. Then. i joined for one year i was there in kujjain but uh, uh, although i was in connected with ujjain temple but i was not able to develop so much it's not that because there was no proper association or everything everything was first class in fact my spiritual master was coming and senior devotees were coming regularly and everything was so nice but i grew more when i came to bhubaneswar because i started to take responsibilities i st- i started feeling this is my project i have to do something for this place and then i became more and more involved in krishna and all these realizations are not that i have gained during my ujjain period it was in bhubaneswar period i got gained all those realizations so let us not remain a visitor in canberra temple let us become an become a most important <laughs> manager in canberra temple you should take the responsibility and then you then there is there is this question will not arise interest or no interest you have to do it <laughs> <laughs> thank you prabhu thank you so much prabhu hare krishna krishna i think shrishti mata ji she will ask a question hare krishna hi krishna hi prabhu ji sorry for being late i think i i want to explain this um my little sister just something happened so literally just at like 8:20 actually so i had to just look after that but yeah i just want to explain and i'm so sorry i missed the whole chat so my question would be very basic maybe silly but joy the robot has been so lovely giving me the courage so i'll ask i guess i'm very new to all of this but i would love to learn i think and i guess my basic question is why follow krishna consciousness i feel like that would help me that would actually like give me so many more questions followed by that if that makes sense yeah when propal went to america the very first lecture he gave the very first line was i have not come here to teach you something new i have come to remind you what you have forgotten why practice krishna consciousness because if you will not practice krishna consciousness then what else we do we are we by nature we are krishna conscious living entities so we have forgotten krishna 
everything else in this material world is is uh, that that we are trying to do is artificial our natural position is that just like for a fish the natural position is to be in water artificially if we'll bring fish out of water and so that is its artificial position for us krishna consciousness is very natural we are part and parcel of the supreme lord we have connection with him to remain in that consciousness is natural for us to so to forget krishna is artificial for us. and nobody can be happy in artificial consciousness you are if you are you are feeling hungry but you are decorating your body so nicely and people are coming and appreciating their looks your dress your makeup but you are hungry from within will it give you satisfaction no similarly we are hungry for spiritual consciousness because we are connected to krishna that is our real nature and until that is not done even outside will will look happy but actually we are not happy outside we may look satisfied but we are actually hankering from within so krishna mm-hmm. consciousness is nothing new it is our inevitable it's a, it's a nature and forgetting krishna being outside of krishna so that is our artificial position an artificial position like if say for example Rav, Rav, ravana used to have 10 10 faces no no one knew his original face similarly we have 10 faces in public we are different in private we are different with friends we are different with relatives we are different with the uh, enemies we are different we are maintaining so much so many faces at the end we are forgetting a real face what who am i actually krishna consciousness reminds us of that and if we'll not serve krishna then what else will do if we'll not be in krishna consciousness then what else will do anything in this anything of this world is very temporary the so the moment you get attached to someone will get difficulties the moment will get attached to some things it will be some day it will be taken away will be difficult we have only one relationship that is eternal and permanent that is with krishna the other day i was speaking in one forum i was telling that our connection with our families is just for say 20 years 30 years 40 years whatever our connection with people of this world is very for very less time but our connection with krishna is eternal but for our connection for 20 30 40 years we are giving so much energy but for eternal connection uh, we don't give time for that we need to understand a real nature and certain things i i'll just practically i would like to conclude that this may look theory until unless you practice krishna consciousness here in uh, india it's it's one in advertisement they say melody khao khud jaan jao you eat melody it's a chocolate melody chocolate you eat melody and you'll get to know how it how it tastes there is one uh, detergent powder it they say pehle istemal kare fir vishwas kare you first uh, use it then you trust on so until as we have not tasted krishna consciousness or if then uh, some it is said in jiva goswami tells in one of his sandarbha like, some proofs are understood in its absence like importance of food you will understand when you are hungry so when you are in krishna consciousness then then when you will not be in krishna consciousness the, the the gap that you will feel will actually tell you what exactly this krishna consciousness is what we are actually hankering for that was so beautiful thank you so much for that that was really nice thank you thank you yeah <coughs> jyotipu can we end here yes prabhu thank you so much prabhu so yeah we can end here hare krishna prabhu dandot pranam prabhu hare krishna all your time thank you thank you so much thank you so much prabhu ji hare krishna dandavat pranam thank you dandavat pranam ji thank you prabhu it'll be good to have you again sometime i'll request jyoti prabhu sure. चला लेंगे